A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem on the subject of the levels of the nafs who knows himself will know his Lord. There's a medical school that's why we are learning these subjects and it's important to know ourselves to understand our proximity to our Lord. That because of the fires of these shaykhs and the blessing and energy the dressing upon them, people become drunk thinking they've achieved something. And they want us to understand these understandings to realize where we are. When you're truthful to yourself and it's not for the shaykh to call you out but for you to understand yourself and the ability to understand. If you don't understand these teachings and you're distracted then you won't understand what's happening in your life and most like you, you run away. Those whom are inspired by Allah to achieve what Allah wants them to achieve then they're studying, they're understanding and they're going at a pace to truly understand themselves with sincerity and change. But they don't know why they're studying, they're not paying attention. Then when a test comes that same day they will actually come and ask, oh my gosh I was just insulted, you know, where were you when these discussions were taking place? That's not good and in any school you go to you fail like that. So we'll start again. Nafs Amara, this is the evil self. This first level of the development of man expresses itself in selfishness, arrogance, hardness of heart, oppression of others, lack of gratitude, ambition, stinginess, envy, anger, cynicism, laziness. At this stage the rational self and human conscience have been overtaken by carnal desires. This is for us our own diagnosis like a medical class. You read what they describe these awliyaullah from teachings of Prophet this is the immense science of the self. So when you see somebody of these characteristics they're nafs amara that they are not accepting anything from the heavens and their understanding is to enjoy this life with whatever ability they can regardless of who's affected, who's helped and who's harmed by it. Like TV now, there's not a, a television channel that they call news and it's not news it's just this. It's a whole bunch of nafsa amara people sitting in front of a camera displaying all these characteristics, what they call talk shows, commentary. There's no more news on the television, nobody's reporting news. They're just one after another doing every type ba bad characteristic, why? So that when you watch it you begin to absorb it and you think this becomes a normal for you that you'll go out and you'll do this. If you are doing these things then you're at the level of nafs amara. So you don't have to admit to your shaykh what think… Uh, how high you think you are, you just <laughs> read this and say, oh that's where I am, yes this is your maqam. This nafs is our worst enemy who is living inside of us, dominating and tyrannizing us and keeping our human soul imprisoned and forgotten in the depths of our subconscious. Because we allow the nafs to lean towards material values, to take pleasure only in worldly life, our nafs has become almost animal-like while its shape remains that of a human being. So then understanding these and then we ask ourselves, am I in that? So when people understand they have lot of bad desires, lot of bad characteristics, they're not changing their characteristics. Then this is to understand that this nafs of mine is at that level and it continuously pulling me towards the badness. So we come to tariqah because they're showing there's no, there's no help for you with yourself. 
There's no self-help, has to be through Allah giving guidance. When Allah gives guidance, He dispatches the lion tamers. So that to begin to send an energy, a teaching, a reality, stop what you're doing. And by accompanying these associations and watching the teachings, taking the fires and the lights of these teachings, making the madad and the taweezes and all of these things or all the implementations to lift amara out and to take the servant out of a deceitful character and to acknowledge Allah to feel it, to love it and to understand the Divinely Presence inshaAllah. Now that if we rise from that bad characteristic then 99% of those in tariqahs are trying to stay in this category inshaAllah. Nafs al This is the second step in the development of man where man becomes aware of his actions and regrets his wrongdoings. He tries to follow the obligations of his religion, yet he is not able to totally stop doing wrong because it is very difficult to break the habits of his previous state. This makes his behavior hypocritical. This is important understanding, the hypocrisy. But it's not for you to change the prescription. They want you to be and to acknowledge your hypocrisy, not you change it. We say, I'll change my image and do every bad thing. No, they want you to be a long bearded pious looking person being obnoxious and angry with everybody so that you can feel shame. The shaming will stop you from it. So when growing up we grow our beard real quick. As soon as my mom would see Maulana she'd say, why this guy with this beard he gets so angry? Every single time, there was not a time she could spare me from humiliation in front of everybody, 40, 50 people, Mom, Mom, I have a question, why do they have beard and hat and they're so angry? The solution wasn't you take your hat off and shave your beard and say, no I want to be an angry person, just don't want anyone to know it. No, this was a protection and a reminder of my hypocrisy. And at some point you feel like, this is horrible Ya Rabbi and you cry that, don't let me be and to die as a munafiq where I have this image of my beard, my turban, my company, my shaykh, I'm doing all these things and doing every type of horrific act. They want you to feel your hypocrisy and they cry out to Allah remove this hypocrisy from me. So that I'm worthy of what I'm trying to follow and, and the image I'm trying to display. But shaitan comes, whispers, now we'll go into, he whispered, oh take it off, leave hypocrisy. What do you mean leave hypocrisy? Then you're telling me to be a, a, a criminal again, be a robber? No, leave hypo hypocrisy means don't do the bad actions. Not I'm going to continue to do the bad actions but I just don't want to look like a Muhammadan. If we are capable of leaving the bad actions and not having arrogance and not having pride and this arrogance and pride is based on the ocean of hypocrisy. The, the arrogance and pride of trying to promote and there's nothing there and you know the badness that you do and then promote yourself as good. Its remedy is the presence and strong presence of the shaykh. For if you're not strong in the presence with the shaykh, you will fall into the deceit of shaitan. Insan al Kamil by author and spiritual guide Shaykh Nurjan Marahmadi describes that in order to be known, the Divine created a sublime treasure for all of creation. The glorious light and soul of the Insan al Kamil, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Vast universes, including every particle in existence, 
came into manifestation through this all-encompassing ocean of perfection. Order on Amazon.com. It's important to know ourselves, to understand our proximity to our Lord. Thinking that because of the energies, because of the strength of the shaykhs that we reach somewhere. And the reminder is, no you're taking the fires of shaykhs that reach somewhere. But to know yourself is to know your Lord, when you see what category you fit and what the character and the characteristics of the nafs are then much easier for us to understand and to be humble with the understanding. Mulhimma The balanced or inspired self, the third level, is the state in which the good has begun to predominate in this struggle. The tyranny of egoism has been overcome and a more or less integrated self is attained. The quality awakened here is the renunciation of worldly longings and ambitions. Although it is only the third level of human development in the Sufi system, it is no minor accomplishment. It requires a great deal of personal, psychological work and of course the blessings of Allah. This is a stage where the seeker is rewarded for his efforts, persistence and obedience to his highest self and his spiritual teacher. Now he occasionally receives messages from inside of himself soundless wordless inspirations which give him direction, encouragement and the strength to continue in his advancement. Yet there are still grave dangers, the devil is capable of imitating divine inspirations. So we reach a point in which we try to control the obvious bad, the arrogance, the, the, the wildness of the character the ocean of hypocrisy, everyone is going to go through it. If you don't feel that you've been through it then maybe you're not there yet. There's no way to leave it, you don't jump over that ocean. The ocean of hypocrisy has to be felt that you're trying to exemplify good character and you're yelling at home. You're trying to exemplify good character, you're yelling at work where you think nobody sees you, you're doing bizarre things on the internet, all of these things is ocean of hypocrisy, giving advice to people when you have yourself know that you're completely empty, that you're crazy and going giving advice for, for marital uh, life and people's lives. Most psychiatrists are crazy and they're giving people advice. So from an ocean of, of nifaq and hypocrisy to give people advice when the advice should have been for yourself. So then tariqah comes and says, advise only yourself, talk only to yourself, build yourself so that Allah doesn't keep looking at you as a hypocrite. That's why then the path was based on silence. Don't look at the one who talks and think, I should be talking too. Put a rock in your mouth. The one who's talking is in big trouble with Allah for his hypocrisy or her hypo hypocrisy. It's not about that, you want to stop the hypocrisy. You're on a path in which to build yourself, every time you make a mistake, astaghfirullah. Every time your family's angry with you, forgive me, forgive me. Ask them for forgiveness and then begin to pray to Allah for forgiveness, Ya Rabbi take me out of this ocean of the munafiqeen, don't let me to die in this state of munafiqeen. So we have to traverse, you know this is like the Siratul Mustaqeem and say, I'm not going to go over the fire. No, everyone walks the line, nobody has left it. So everything you do and identify yourself but you're angry and explosive and fiery and all these characteristics that we described, then Allah looks to you, you're hypocrite. 
So then you should be crying every night to get out of hypocrisy. Not that you take off your Islam but you take off shaitan. Don't, don't leave Allah to run into the hands of shaitan but to throw out shaitan so that you are with Rahman. The next level that they begin to step into that ocean is that the overwhelming fires and energies, their practices and all of their disciplines are now moving in onto them, dressing them, blessing them and the knowledges they acquired are real for them and they have a firmness in their faith and they firmly fought against the hypocrisy of their character and they didn't speak until they were ordered to speak because they knew their hypocrisy. It is during this period that the relation between the seeker and his master has to be the closest. They are like the symptoms of a disease which a sick person must reveal to the doctor in whom he has confidence. Just as he heeds the advice given or the diet prescribed or diligently takes the medicine given, if he obeys the counsel of his master he will be able to advance. Another affliction during this period is a change in understanding and sensibility. It is as if he forgets all that he knew, even his idea of himself. New impressions do not correspond to the old ones. He is apt to see things differently, to misunderstand them, to make mistakes. He feels as if he does not exist. He may imagine that he has reached the final level, but this feeling has nothing to do with that high state. He should realize that it is a state of helplessness, of emptiness, a state of desperate need. This is the last level of danger for the self, for it is still vulnerable to descending. Means then its survival is a strong relation with the shaykh. Why? So that you're not living in your imaginary world, you're not to listen to your inspirations, you're not to listen and follow your inspirations, your inspirations are only for your ibadah. You don't make any decisions based on what you feel is coming to your heart because in this training they're teaching, it's not your heart that you're dealing with. You're not in Divinely Presence, you're in the presence of shaitan and your nafs, the two shariq and they're trying to inspire you to go and do things without asking your living guide. And now by help me at nurmuhammad.com you don't have to ask about the color of the paint of your house. These are just major decisions in which you're going to make a decision, I'm leaving the tariqah, I'm leaving the zikr, I'm doing this, I'm going to go now seek out the, this person to help me with this magic. You're not supposed to do anything of that nature other than deal with your shaykh because now shaitan is trying to play with you in religious and pious matters. I've said that's why you see all the people in a community start to make their own centers. They have one community masjid, they go make another masjid. They think they've been inspired by God to do that, to break a community. For what? This is the bad ego and that's when people are falling prey to that because they don't have a shaykh. And when they have firmness with their guide, it's not that they listen to him because nobody listens to the guide. But at least you can take his advice and say, his advice seems to be very different than these two guys who are whispering in my ears. Because the one who's whispering is trying to fool us with deceit and in acts of piety. Like we said before, take off your hypocrisy, no, 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 don't take off your hypocrisy. Wear it proudly and take shaitan off, never leave Allah's way. You want to die in a state where you're completely following Allah's way, not to, to follow the satanic way and that's how he fools people and thinking this is a religious inspiration. And there are many examples most of which you can't talk about onto the internet of unbelievable things that people are thinking they should do this, they should do that, they should do this and no, 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 no. These are you know, these are just the, the wi wild whisperings of the nafs to make the student to fall into a hole and into an ocean of difficulty. We pray that Allah guide us, this is a path into the cave in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah dress us and bless us 
who knows himself will know his Lord. And this way of uh, realities is to know myself, know my nafs, know what's happening and what, what tricks are coming upon me and then I have to leave. 99.9% .9 are in the ocean of hypocrisy and all night long they should be praying and we should be praying, Ya Rabbi take away nifaq, take away all this hypocrisy. Don't let me to die as a munafiq, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. If money could just grow on trees, there would be no need for this message. Since it doesn't, let us show you where your generous donations are going. We film, edit, and produce weekly television shows of divinely knowledge throughout Canada and the UK. as well as live stream internationally on Facebook and YouTube. Sheikh Nurjan's ever-growing online presence is the result of continuous financial input, and with your financial assistance and participation, this rapid growth will continue. Our Muhammadan Way app is continuously being upgraded and improved providing an all-encompassing Islamic guide. In addition to the Muhammadan Way app, NurMuhammad.com is a website of immense knowledge and comprehensive Islamic teachings that is updated daily. Your ongoing support also enables a team of editors to compile books of heavenly wisdom from Sheikh Nurjan's teachings. One of our longest ongoing initiatives has been to provide basic necessities to the most in need worldwide. From feeding people in Vancouver's downtown east side, to clothing LA's homeless community, and supporting a children's orphanage in Pakistan. Your ongoing donations will help us continue to spread the love and example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Become a shareholder in immense blessings. NurMuhammad.com forward slash donate.